Welcome back here on North Metro TV. This is Sports Den. I'm Blythe Whaley alongside Bill Hupp. And this week is all luck of the Irish as we are preparing for St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> yeah, we're wearing green. We're excited. It's middle of March. It's supposed to be 50 out tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think spring is, is on the horizon. We're feeling it. Yeah, yeah. we're feeling it. I know we can now finally look outside maybe for some four leaf clovers. We don't have to dig through as much snow hopefully in the next few days to yeah. find any. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> but uh, uh, as we enter playoff time, uh, the question is, would our basketball teams uh, in, in the area uh, find that playoff pot of gold? Yeah, definitely. And Lucky we, Charms. And they we, find it. Yeah, <laughs> let's hope. And we start for that search in Roseville as the Spring Lake Park Panthers visited the Roseville Raiders in the Section 5 Class 4A semifinal. On enemy territory, Avery Dunbar with the acrobatic layoff for two of her 12 points to give the Panthers an early lead. But the Raiders would respond. Drew Johnston pulls up from the elbow for two of her game high 31 points on the night. Roseville lived at the line all game. Michaela Holton pushing the lead for the Raiders to double digits. Early second half, Brianna Nussbaum off the bounce, snakes her way for the and one opportunity. Second half, though, Raiders up big when guard Kendall Barnes steals it and takes it coast to coast. Raiders would push ahead in transition and sink a late three to put it away. Bella Such had a great game with 17 points and nine rebounds to lead SLP, but their season comes to an end in the section semis. Now the Andover Huskies take their way on the road to the Blaine Bengals. Andover the three seed playing our Bengals the two seed. And as they get things started, this is Danielle Davis giving it up. They find Maddie Bryant on the right side to swoosh it in early. The Bengals trying to pave the way in this game. The Andover Huskies, Emma Frost, takes it all the way to the hole. Left side, left hand, everything right about that, though. And now this is Sophia White helping prepare her team to give it up in the corner. Baller for three. The Huskies starting to come alive and feeling it later in this game. Putting this one away, Baller. Emma Frost, excuse me, again. But as the Bengals tried to cut this deficit back. That was Garber to the hole. And continuing, Sophia White runs the baseline, gives it up, and Imdek puts it down. The final score, the Andover Huskies defeat our Bengals. And as you see that final score, 68 to 58. Emma Frost and Anna Voller, both 17 points against our Bengals. So big nights for them, but Imdek not far behind with 15. Molly Garber, 27 though, so a lot to be proud of for her game, but Allison Terry, the next closest, and Jade Bryant right behind her. So unfortunately, our Bengals did not feel quite lucky in that game as they don't move on here in this section tournament. So the Cougars got to host them, and this takes the court, and Cubes gets things started. Top of the key three to bang it through to push them in that early lead. Cougars are up, but Amr wants to change that. She puts down the hammer and drops the three of her own. Pullman pushing forward, gets it to McCall underneath and gets the young freshman started to help her team continue to surge ahead. This one rolling in for Will Trout. Again, they're trying to claw back into this centennial, showing their force as they put down another lay-in. That is McCall from Tharp. Frost now with it, and she wants to go all the way to the hole around. So many defenders, and she gets the roll in. The Centennial Cougars win this game 62 to 49 to advance to that section final game. So now we do get to see if they get lucky to find their way to the state tournament. And over Husky is playing the Centennial Cougars. This just happened on March 10th. And this means that trip to the state tournament. Pushed ahead early, Cubes underneath, gets things going in transition. That's Cougar basketball. Pullman for the three. Numerous players happening. 
in the offense for the Cougars. Now KJ Tharp inside. See how many names we're saying the Cougars. They have that depth. A lot of players getting it to go for them. This is Miller. So finally the Andover Husky is finding some success out there. They're trying to chip away, but Cummings to the hole with the left side and that left-handed lay-in. Cummings, a huge piece of this offense, but she kicks it to Megan Stacy, and it was so nice to be able to say so many Cougars found their points in this game. Numerous players getting some success and 67-34, that final score to move to the state tournament. And you guys have punched your ticket to the state tournament. Congrats, you guys. We're going to start here with Sydney Cubes. And Cubes, it's been awesome watching you throughout your career here as a Cougar, but even more so in these last few games of your senior year. What has it meant to you? And maybe what has helped you step up really into this role that you're meant to have? Yeah, uh, the team is so pumped. We're all so into it, wanting to get to that state game. Uh, I'm just really proud of everybody. And everybody's been pushing each other and keeping it positive at practice. And we're just getting it done. And now to crush it in the section championship game, what got you guys going? How were you able to go lights out and start so great and get up to that big lead early on here? I personally think it's our locker room pump up before the game that just gets us going. And obviously our coaches giving us the info we need before the games and that scouting report we need. I think you got to expand on that a little bit. What's happening in the locker room? How are you guys getting pumped? So I really like the song Right Foot Creep. So we're just like hitting the gritty. <laughs> Sounds cringy, but in the locker room, yes, it's getting us going. It has to happen. And uh, is there anything special that you're eating before these big games that just gets you ready to nail some of these threes? Oh, yeah. Um, since I was young, I've ate a fruit cup, oatmeal, Cliff Bar, and banana before every game. <laughs> So. I know you got to stay consistent exactly but the last thing for you would be just now you're headed to the state tournament Woo. it's senior year what does this mean to you to get to go back there honestly I don't even have words I'm trying to take it in that we're going again but just excited so <laughs> thank you well congrats thank you we'll, we'll, ha we'll have all of you step on by okay. and uh, good luck thank you. but Haley Mulberry another captain on this senior squad it's so exciting for you to again help this team move their way to the state tournament your consistency also helping this team rebound those second oh, chance yeah. points was big tonight how were you able to get in position to get those um I just think People think I'm more of a shorter girl, so they kind of forget about me, but I can get down and get dirty, get those boards. Yes. <laughs> and now one of your teammates, Marissa Frost, putting in 19 oh points tonight. What words would you have to say about her helping you in your senior year move to that state tournament? She is just all around a great player. Literally could not say a bad word about Marissa. She, before the game, I knew she was nervous. She always says, she's like, I'm a little nervous, guys, but she comes out and just plays her heart out every night. She's great. And now it's your senior year. I mean, what has this team meant to you throughout these years that you've been here? It means the world. Coming from a freshman till now, it means like everything. Three out of the four years going to state, it's like I couldn't ask for anything more. Exactly. Well, it's been awesome watching you. You've done such a great job for the yeah. Cougars, but definitely good luck as we headed to state. Thank you. Okay, Camille Cummings. Wow, not enough words could talk about your season and your career as a Cougar, but tonight your team started to lead the way for you. You weren't off to that. those points in that column that you typically are used to in the first half. What did mentally that do to you? But how do you just sit back and let your team help pull you into that second half? You know, at the beginning of the season, they really had to rely on me, you know, but now um, I think the girls have learned their roles and really picked up and throughout the season, like they can't just focus on me now and they have to focus on everyone. And I think that's what makes our team so special. So you're heading to state. What do you think your team needs to hone in on and make sure they continue to do as they head there? I think we just need to focus to stay calm and um, <laughs> um, I don't know what's happening. It might be our teammate Anna on FaceTime. She's in Florida, I think. Oh, yeah. But um, what was it? Sorry, what was the question? <laughs> what do you think your team needs to do as you head to the state tournament? How do you make a good run in state? Yeah, I think we just need to stay calm and keep doing what we're doing. Um, we're playing really well, I think, as a team, and we're not playing selfish. Um, we're finding players, and yeah, I think we're playing really well right now. I've been so impressed watching you this season. What do you think you did in the off season to just, you know, move your game just that little bit up? Because you've always been a good player for Centennial, but I think this year, just that little bit more. Yeah, um, I trained with this guy named Damien. You can go check him out. He's really good. <laughs> No. Well, Camille Cummings, we're so pumped for you. Senior year, heading to the state tournament. Just congrats, that's Thank all I can so say. Yeah. Thank you.
And as we look again, that final score, 67-36. The Centennial Cougars win it to move on to play at Williams Arena. That big highlight for them. But Marissa Frost, 19 points. Massive game for her. But Cubes, 10 points. She has been doing quite well here at the end of the season, racking up those points. But Camille Cummings gets her solid 10 in, even though she's had numerous games in the 20s. But still, to put in the double figures always feels great. Andover Huskies last game. But again, our Cougars will move on. So that's they got some luck. We, they found the pot of gold, I guess you could say. Yep, they found the playoff pot of gold, and they'll be taking on the third seed, St. Michael Albertville. Blythe will be on the call for that one on Wednesday at Williams Arena, 4 p.m. the tip time, and it'll be delayed broadcast. So Centennial and STMA in the state tournament, and a good to see the Cougars back there after losing in the state semifinals last year. Yeah, exactly. Always nice, you know, to have that comeback year. Okay, last year, and now trying to, to push on and get that win this year. But they weren't the only ones that made it to the state tournament. Luke Studer, state champion, 138 pounds, the first Bengal state champion in 40 years. He and his father, Don, joined us in studio earlier this evening. We'll have that interview for you, interview for you straight ahead when we return here inside Sports Deck. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. And we're back here on Sports Den. Bill Hupp alongside Blythe Whaley. And we welcome to the studio Luke Studer and his father, Don Studer. Luke Studer, the state champion at 138 pounds for the Blaine Bengals this year. And Luke, you're the first state champion in wrestling in 40 years for Blaine High School. Just how does that sound and, and how did it feel to bring home that state title? Um, it feels amazing to bring it home. But uh, I mean, to have all my hard work throughout the years just finally pay off and just uh, be able to just be at the top and just it's outstanding. I just can't really put into words how excited I was and just grateful that it happened. And Don, you actually won a state title yourself in 1980. What was it like sitting in the stands and watching your boy bring home the gold? Well. I was coaching him, so I was at Matt's side, and I told my wife that I'm glad I was coaching him because I had something to do other than just watch and, and be nervous. So I wasn't nervous what was going on. I was confident it was going to turn out the way it is, the way it did. Uh, we had to come back from behind in the third period, but uh, when it was over, it was finally just a big whew, relief, uh, a lot of joy and happiness, and uh, it was uh, great. And Luke, we, we have to go back to you and ask, just when you were younger, you told us that three or four, you got started with wrestling, but it wasn't your favorite thing back then. Maybe when did that change? What, what changed it for you that you all of a sudden loved wrestling moving on? Um, probably just in middle school. Um, I wasn't, I didn't like wrestling as much in youth. Like dad was trying to hide under the bed, get me to practice. And, <laughs> um, I always had fun when I got to practice though. And it's just, it was just like, getting there was the hard yeah. part because wrestling it's a very mental sport and I think once I got past the that barrier of like yeah I just have to like it and then me just choosing to like it because I like doing it um, I think it was just around middle school get, winning those close tough matches against those top end kids and just really just putting my name out there and just was a lot of, a lot of fun and then, of course, for you, seeing your son have this success, of course, you said was encouraging and exciting. But when you think back on yourself, being a young child, getting into wrestling, what were some of those things that got you to be on board and so driven? Well, I'm from a huge family of 12. I had seven older brothers that wrestled. Uh, so I just had to wrestle. And it was always <laughs> the competition in our family was, you know, I just had to be better than them. And they were pretty good. So. Uh, we had a good team at the time, went to the state tournament twice. I went twice as an individual and uh, was never really a goal. My goal was always I just wasn't going to lose to anybody. Uh, and my senior year, that's uh, how it turned out. 
Luke, uh, you came in, I mean, last year you finished fourth at 132 pounds. But this year you came in as the top ranked wrestler at 138. How were you able to handle those expectations with everyone gunning for you in the state tournament and still come out on top? Um, well, this year was very different for me in the way I had to wrestle because I've always liked being the underdog. I've kind of always had gotten uh, a drive from being the underdog and not saying that people don't put me up at the top with these other big names. And so this year I kind of just had to think to myself, and I am one of those people now. So I just changed the way I wrestled and came out to matches. Yeah, it's kind of a change of that mentality. Yep. Huh? Now, Don, you mentioned that you were a coach for Blaine as well, uh, but you're also a father. How are you able to separate your duties as a father with your, with your duties as a coach? Well, there are a lot of conversations we had where I had to start with, this is your dad talking to you. <laughs> and there were conversations where, okay, this is your coach talking to him. And some of those conversations were a little different depending on what hat I had on. Uh, when I was on the sidelines, I was always the coach. Uh, and the dad part came when we got home. Uh, but Luke was very coachable, uh, one of the best kids in the, that we've had at Blaine, obviously, uh, but so coachable uh, that uh, it was just a fun ride for the last, uh, since uh, you were three, trying to get on the mat with your older brothers. <laughs> it's been a, quite a while. Yeah, and you just touched on, of course, his older brother, seeing his older brother have some good success with the Blaine program. What did that do for you to see your brother in some of those tough situations to push your drive maybe into overdrive to get your win? Um, I would have to say watching them lose. I always remember the matches, those close losses more than their big victories just because it's I knew I can do more than what they've done. And it's always been a competition to see who's the best wrestler in the family. And getting that title, I think, puts it away. Yeah, and I think, too, of course, you're seeing your son, all of your sons, have some, some good success. Do you think it was tough to see maybe your sons lose to then see your younger son get that victory? Or do you think they all were cheering each other on throughout that process? They were all cheering for him. They were there. Uh, they wanted it, too. Uh, they wanted to have his name up in the wrestling room permanently with state champ behind it. Uh, there, there, there was no animosity between them or jealousy. Uh, they, they just feel like they were a part of it too. Don, I'm curious because you both wrestled at 138 pounds and won state titles at 138 pounds, albeit 42 years apart. How is your style compared to Luke's? Is it, was it similar or were you different? Totally different. I was more, he's so good on his feet. Uh, and it, it's just the way wrestling has uh, evolved. Uh, the kids today are so good on their feet uh, that uh, you know Luke today would would mop me up uh, <laughs> unless I could get on top. Yeah, and uh, Luke, as your dad said, 170 wins, the all-time leading wins uh, wrestler at uh, Blaine High School, all-time leader in wins and pins at Blaine. Um, what are your plans uh, for the future? Are you planning to wrestle in college somewhere? Um, I am planning on wrestling in college. Um, I'm undecided where yet, though, but looking at a couple schools. All right, well, hopefully you stay local and, and the, your fans can continue to come out and, and watch you wrestle. And something, too, is for you, when now you're looking back on your career, do you hope that some of those young guys picked up anything, or do you have any advice that you want to share of the success you've been able to have? Um, I would say my biggest issue with wrestling was always uh, just the mental factor of it. It's very uh, mentally demanding. And once you can find something to get over that hill of just um, cutting weight or um, not wanting to go to practice, um, you, it really opens up your doors to see um, what you can put, push your body through and your mind through to uh, get the most out of the sport. Well, Luke and Don, we want to thank you again for coming into Sports Day today. And Luke, congrats again on your state title. You. Well-deserved and very well-earned. And uh, best of luck uh, with your future endeavors. Thank you. Coming up next, Maple Grove and Spring Lake Park in a second. North Metro TV News is your source for local stories. 
Highlighting the issues in your community, we bring you the news that's closer to home. Join us as we explore the stories all around us, every day at 2.30, 6.30, and 10.30. Back inside Sports Den, and it wasn't just girls basketball that took place in the playoffs this, uh, this past week, but the boys also took the court in their first uh, rounds of section play, and we covered it for you right here on North Metro TV, starting with Forest Lake and Centennial, the fifth seed Rangers taking on the fourth seed Centennial Cougars in the section 7-4-A quarterfinals. Sharp red jacket there for Spencer Waldvogel. Owen Waldock off the curl for three of his game high 23 points. Good movement, ball movement for the Cougars results in a corner three for Jack D'Agostino. End of the half though for the Rangers, Nick Bartlett hangs and fires and scores. Tied at 29 in the second half, Reese Newdahl doing some work down low as he gets it in the post and worms his way for two. In late second half, it's Bartlett again from the top of the key. He'd finish with 15 points, second on the team. And then Waldock adds to the Rangers lead late with a spinning move inside off the glass. Centennial can't catch up in the end. They fall to Forest Lake in a quarterfinal upset, 56 to 50. As you see the uh, unfortunate totals right there, Third seed goes down. Reese Newdahl with 14, Luke Clark with 12, but it would not be enough to overcome Owen Waldock's game high 23 points. Forest Lake moves on to the semifinals in section seven. And now our final highlight to see if our Spring Lake Park Panther boys team can find their lucky night. This past Wednesday, the Panthers ahead on the road to the Maple Grove Crimson. And in this game, getting things started, none other than Logan Kinsey in the lane, floats it up there and gets in that high arcing shot in the lane. But Maple Grove, Peter Norby doesn't want Spring Lake Park to get off to too much of a lead. Freddie Anthony fakes right, goes left, and it works for him, finding it all the way to bank it in. Logan Kinsey again gets that pass in from that out of bounds play, so that baseline jumper. But Nick Ogile draining it through, making it rain on the Crimson home court. So definitely making it difficult for the Crimson, but Jameson Jr. found a way to make it happen underneath. Peyton Thompson puts through this free throw to help solidify that victory for the Panthers to move on to the semifinals. That was 74-68 Panthers as we look at the boys' basketball brackets. Park Center going to take on Moundsview on the 15th, and our Spring Lake Park Panthers will take on Osseo. Bill, you're on that game, and it should be a good one to see if our Panthers can push through to that section final game. Yeah, it should be a tough one for the Panthers at Osseo, and if they win there, presumably they will have to take on the top seed and second-ranked Park Center Pirates uh, in the section final, potentially at Rogers. Uh, on Thursday. So a big week of hoops coming up for the Spring Lake Park Panthers boys team with two daunting opponents ahead of them. But an even bigger week for the Centennial girls as they look to get back on top and in that state championship game. Yeah, how awesome for them heading to Williams Arena on Wednesday. But again, for the boys, I mean, they're making that run, that run that they want to at the end of the season. And Good luck to the Spring Lake Park Panthers as they head to take on Osseo. But definitely we have some lucky games in there from last week as they move our teams on. Yeah, both teams will be looking to, for that playoff pot of gold and, and we'll see <laughs> just how lucky they are. See, uh, season finale of Sports Den is next week. Until then, enjoy that corned beef and cabbage. <laughs> She's Blythe, I'm Bill. We'll see you next time right here inside Sports Den.